It's Garrett Winky here with the healthy boy himself, Eddie Baker. We're about to go in here. This is definitely the latest seven slabs we've ever done. It's nice and dark out, but it's also going to be one of the rarest. So, we're about to go in here. He's going to pick out all of his dope shit. And it doesn't look like anyone else is in the store right now. So, hopefully, everyday music will rock with us this time and turn the music off. We got lean for sale. Think I'm keen to kill. Bunch of G's for sale. Broccoli feed me well. Out on easy street. Up in easy bill. About to take the game. That's an easy steal. We got lean for So it looks like we got our slaps here. We couldn't find less than zero at his latest tape, but he said the book is better anyways. So it looks better. Uh, we can take it away. First, I got the slip shed here. Yeah, it's one of the first things I ever got. And I was about third grade when this came out, which is fucking crazy. Guilty Conscience, the video came out on MTV. I remember it was fucking wild. When we were young, the main thing, you had to try to get Eminem first. You know what I'm saying? It's Slim Shady. I've been in the Twin Babies. And Mercedes Benz with the windows up to the tent goes up to the mid-80s. Call them men ladies. Sorry, Dr. I'm being crazy. It's what that you can't say. It's okay, go with him. Hey, it was a bunch of shit. Look at that. And that was like his whole little thing. That was like the thing back in the day. You had to get Eminem first. That's one of my favorite albums right here. This right here is close to my heart. You know what I'm saying? This this album, this is one of Gucci Man's second major album he did. You know what I'm saying? Shit was just dope as fuck. I, 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 I think this came out when I was like 18. And it was just a fucking dope ass album. Every song was just perfect to me. You know? I loved uh, all the features and just concept wise, you know what I'm saying? He just killed it. I used to bump this every day. You know what I'm saying? This really would make me want to start doing more hard music, bangers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Subline, one of my favorite albums too. When I was in high school, 17 years old, 16, 17 years old, selling pot with my homies around fucking Upland, Ontario. I'll be bumping this shit with my homies there. It was just that Cali shit, you feel me? It was just, yeah. you can't even say it's like rock, it's rap, rock. You know, I guess they call it it's Scott. Like funk, Scott. Pop. Yeah. But it's like, it's, one of my favorite it's, it's literally just like, down on like the boardwalk in California, yeah. like surfing, skating. You feel like you're in California. Yeah, exactly. Like, I've never even been to California, but I've been so many times. Exactly. And they're from Long Beach, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bright North. But they still uh, perform too. They got a new lead singer. Yeah, so Rome. I'm with Rome. Yeah, yeah. I'm about Rome, yeah. Godfather. Yeah. This whole trilogy. Fresh Four Coppola, one of my favorite directors. All three of these, you know, Michael Corleone, Rise to the Top. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And then takes on Red Team. It's just a fucking hard shit to me. I do a lot of mafia references, uh, a lot of my concept tapes, you know what I'm saying? I have like a gangster reference and a drug dealer reference and all that, but all kinds of things, you know what I'm saying? Like, and the trilogy, I do trilogies a lot, you know what I'm saying? Not one, two, and three. I did that for the Godfather, you know what I'm saying? Godfather. George A. Romero, one of the greatest horror directors ever. One thing I like about him is that he, he keeps the, the same world, you know what I'm saying? Like, in all of his movies, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's all the same world just different characters, you know what I'm saying? So something that happened in this movie might affect this movie like years later, but he's one of my favorite directors. And I also liked him too, because he always has black characters. That's like his main oh, character. Yeah. He always had like strong black characters, you know what I'm saying? This movie, I saw this when I was a little kid, and the main character, it was like a black and white movie, probably made like 1960s, I believe. But the main character was this black guy, he was just whooping ass the whole movie, you know what I'm saying? Like, that really got me into George A. Romero, so you know, it's one of my favorite movies. I fucking can watch this any fucking day. Bottom, you know, all that. Danger Doom. 10th grade, this came out. I just bumped this shit all the fucking time. This is fucking Danger Mouse and fucking MF Doom. This fucking whole album, man. This is like my first, I don't even like really like underground quote unquote rap, whatever. This is like my only like, I can bump this shit off of, man. Yeah. Kill this shit. I guess because I was a Cartoon Network, you know what I'm saying? I was in a Cartoon oh, Network yeah. a lot. So this was really, like, that's what got me into it, like to listen to it once I listened to it. I became a big fan of him. So the same with Danger Mouse. It's just the artwork. It's just fucking. It's not Wolverine? That's Harvey Birdman. Oh, fuck yeah. I'm at love of you for that. Harvey <laughs> Birdman, Miwa, Danger Mouse, Space Ghost, fucking Shake, Carl, Doom, just a bunch of shit. This is that real old school fucking. It's him great. Yeah. I'm 24 now. It's been all over too fucking great. And last but not least, Dr. Dre. I couldn't get the fucking, they didn't have the album, this instrumental album, but same difference. This is probably why I'm so fucking dirty in my raps. I just talk about so much fucking explicit shit, weed and drugs and fucking bitches and 
bitch right here. My mother used to bump us in the car every day. And it just fucking corrupted my mind. Made me a fucking West Coast, California, weed rapper. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Shit. And I got a, uh, I got one slap here too. It's the Limp Biscuit remix album. That's where. Oh fuck! It's not even my slap anymore. <laughs> this slap right here. I tried to I tried to find Chocolate Starfish in the hot dog. I was looking for that too. Cause that's that's a legendary album. That came out when I was about the same time this came out. That's yeah, that shit. one. Man, that came out the same time this came out. The Chocolate Starfish was so, so dope. I remember the cover. The cover was rare as fuck. All of the albums, all the songs were bangers. They had like the Roland remix with Method Man and Red Man, yeah. which was like critical. And like four of the songs on the album were all wrestling pay per view. Yeah, yeah, they were just fucking crazy. So I was a crazy talk for this I was trying to find yeah. that, but I could only find this one. It's got the P Diddy remix to my way on it though, so I might have to cop this. Imagine how epic like Limp Bizkit was. They, were just they really were, and you guys are the like whole Sesh team is really bringing them out of the like woodwork as well. Crazy. Yeah, shout out to Fred Durst. Like, shout out to Fred Durst, Loki the man. Oh, yeah. but he is a legend, and so is Eddie Baker. So yeah, yeah. here we are, seven slaps in the sack. Buy all of these, yeah. listen to all of his music. Do that. Bro. Watch seven slaps more often. <laughs> Smoke a lot of weed every Smoke day. Smoke a lot of weed every day. Shout out to Dr. Jerry.